Argentina still had to chase the goal. Running past an Italian team that beat Argentina by one point in group play. Gold for Argentina. Silver for Italy. Bronze for the USA. But this game will go down. In it's a big challenge for us. You know, obviously, I, mean, I, I feel like the, the rest of the world kind of feels like the, the gap is continuing to shorten. And they feel like they can beat us. You know, we know what's at stake. And we know what's at hand. We know what we're representing. So, you know, come Olympic time, we're going to be ready to go. And um, we're going to bring back the gold medal to, to the U.S. When you think of USA basketball, three words that come to mind are dominance, blowouts, and gold. As for the past seven years, USA basketball has dominated on the international stage, winning 16 gold medals and having numerous unbeaten streaks. Yes, they've had their hiccups, their big time losses, but after adding pros in 1982, USA Basketball once again was at the top of the world. And heading into the 21st century, they were once again unbeaten and riding a 24 game win streak. And I guess at this point you could say USA Basketball, they got complacent and their overall roster wasn't constructed of the best basketball team. As in the 04 Olympics in Athens, Greece, yes, USA had talent, but their overall team did not mesh well together. As they had Allen Iverson, Tim Duncan, Stephon Marbury, Sean Marion, Lamar Odom, as well as Carlos Boozer. And on the bench, they had a young D. Wade, LeBron James, as well as Carmelo Anthony. Once again, this team had talent, and they are a great collection of individual players. But as an overall basketball team, this is not USA's best going to the 04 Olympics. And from the jump, USA was blitzed, as in their first opening game, they lost to Puerto Rico by 19 points. And that loss right there was only one of three, as two weeks later, they would lose to Lithuania by four points, and the eventual gold medal champions, Argentina, by eight points. USA in this tournament, they would medal, getting bronze, but still it was a massive disappointment given the overall talent and the standard for USA basketball. And as you could imagine, after three embarrassing losses, in the following tournaments, the coaches were changed, and the overall management of USA Basketball was definitely shaken up. But even with that being said, many forget, in the 06 FIBA World Cup, USA once again lost and got bronze. And this team, unlike 04, was stacked with superstar talent. They had LeBron James, D. Wade, Carmelo, Dwight Howard, as well as Chris Paul. And by losing this tournament and getting bronze, that meant the following year in 07, USA had to take home gold and get first place. So what did they do? They brought in the man himself, Kobe Bean Bryant, who at this point had never suited up in the red, white, and blue. And looking at him individually, since 04 when Shaq got traded, Kobe all those years was under immense pressure as well as media scrutiny. He'd missed the playoffs multiple times, had first round losses, blown leads, and worst of all in 07, he even requested a trade. At this point in time, the media and most non-Lakers fans did not like Kobe. They thought he was entitled, spoiled, and selfish, and in the wrong for getting Shaq kicked out. Now, even with all that pressure, Kobe in the qualifying tournaments was simply fantastic averaging 15.3 points, the third most on the team, on insane 55, 46, and 87 splits. And for Team USA, he was their overall leader in steals per game. And looking at a very important moment for the Redeem team, it was their first ever scrimmage in Las Vegas. As Kobe in this moment, with 15,000 fans watching the stadium, he once again proved why he was the best player in the world. As going head to head versus LeBron James, Kobe in this game had 26 points on 10 of 22 shooting, the game winner and the defensive stop on LeBron himself. That moment and those two plays crystallized why Kobe was the best player in the world. And for this team, he was their clear cut alpha and their leader. And for most younger NBA fans or fans who didn't watch the Redeem team, when you think of Kobe, you automatically think of offense and scoring. Getting 81 points, 62 and three quarters, and his last game where he once again dropped 60. But back in 08 for USA, 
Toby's main focus was setting the tone on the defensive end. He's the best player in the league at that time. He had seven 50-point games that year. And he, he knew that he would have to change a little bit and be a leader. And, and, but he says, I, I, you know, I want to guard the best perimeter player. And then he pauses and, you know, his eyes, he and Jordan had the same, had the same eyes. They killed you with their eyes. And, and he leans forward and he said, coach, I promise you I'll destroy him. <laughs> so I, I got, holy shit. <laughs> and looking at the 08 team, of course you had Kobe, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul, Carmelo, Chris Bosh, Dwight Howard, Darren Williams, Jason Kidd, as well as Tayshaun Prince as the main guys who played big time minutes. And unlike previous tournaments in 04, this USA team got off to a great start, beating China by a whopping 31 points. In the following games, they beat Angola by 21, Greece by 23, Spain by 37, and Germany by 49. If you go back and watch the games during the highlights, you can tell the chemistry was definitely building, and guys like D-Wade and LeBron truly had something special. And what made this team so different from the 04 team is in 08, you had superstars making sacrifices and playing both ends. As Kobe in this tournament was third on the team in scoring at 15 points, compared to Dwayne Wade, who averaged 16, and LeBron at 15.5. Also one big difference, you had a true point guard in Chris Paul, who averaged 4 assists, and LeBron, who averaged 3.8. This Team USA top to bottom had great defensive players, great playmakers, who had dynamic scores, and someone like Melo, who was instant offense, and Dwight Howard who was a great rim protector. And once again, looking at Kobe individually in group play, he had pretty impressive numbers. But obviously, he was saving himself and waiting for the tournament stage. As in the first round versus Australia, he had a team high 25 points. 5 boards on 10 to 16 shooting and 4 7 from 3. They beat Australia by 30 and was a very impressive and dominant victory. And looking on to round 2, they would play Argentina in a rematch of the 04 Olympics. In this game for Kobe offensively, he only had 12 points on pretty piss poor shooting. But once again in 08 for Kobe, he was a dual threat player who could play both ends. And this matchup he played 32 minutes, a game high, picking up players full court, pressuring them, guarding pick and rolls, double teams, doing whatever it took defensively to get the W. Now finally, getting to the gold medal game versus Spain, this matchup was definitely pretty intimidating. As on the Spanish side, we had Pau Gasol, Rudy Fernandez, Marc Gasol, as well as Ricky Rubio. And skipping right to the fourth quarter, with 8 minutes left, it was a 2 point game and a toss up of who would get gold. And taking one step back, for Spain, they were playing with house money as all the pressure was on USA and specifically Kobe being Bryant. In this last 4th quarter, I would argue this is the most pressure a single player has ever had. Not only individually, but for his country and the basketball world. As if USA loses again, it's a massive embarrassment and the redeemed team falls flat on their face. They don't avenge their bronze medals and Kobe as the leader is viewed as a failure and the media would dogpile him. And even worse, going into that fourth quarter, Kobe was not having a good game, only having 8 points on sub 40 shooting with 3 turnovers. But in that fourth quarter, he had one of the greatest games of all time. It was simply spectacular as he had 12 points, 3 assists, 2 huge threes, the dagger floater, and iced the game from the free throw line. It was a brilliant masterclass performance on refusing to lose and willing your team to a victory. And looking past the gold medal, the tournament, all the stats, the impact Kobe had on his teammates was definitely felt the following NBA season. As LeBron James, won his first of four MVPs, Dwight Howard 
made the NBA Finals. Dwayne Wade averaged 30 a game, the NBA scoring leader. Carmelo Anthony in the Western Conference Finals, his deepest playoff run ever. And Chris Paul averaged 22.8 points per game, the highest of his career. And most impressive, looking at the MVP voting, all the top five finishers were part of the 08 Redeem team. And looking at Kobe himself, from 08 to 2010, his accomplishments were massively impressive. Winning MVP, the gold medal, two finals MVPs, back-to-back -back championships, beating 10 50-win opponents, and his Lakers team never winning less than 57 games. Those three years for Kobe were massively important, and the overall narrative for his career changed instantly in that moment. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.